Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. I apologise for not covering the United game at the time. I apologise that it's been a few days since I've uploaded absolutely anything. Um, so since the City vlog, um, I've been quiet, but I've been very busy. Obviously the jet lag has not helped. Uh, the being in New York until Sunday uh, didn't help. So yeah, I did see the United game, of course. I was watching it in a bar in uh, JFK Airport. But yeah, uploading a video, talking about it was just not feasible. Um, but I will cover it here briefly whilst we look at other transfer stuff as well. It was an amazing trip in New York. Um, if you haven't seen my vlog from it, then please do. It's the first time I've been to the States, first time I've been to New York, obviously. Um, so it was a pretty, you know, pretty uh, overwhelming experience for me. Really, really enjoyed myself at the game and in the few days that followed that in the city. It was great meeting so many Liverpool fans out there, um, some of which were subscribed to me um, and bought me drinks and stuff, which was all very pleasant. So thanks, um, you know, to, to all the guys that uh, I met out there and were so friendly. Um, went to Carragher's Bar a few times in the end and yeah, what a place and what a city. So check out that vlog if you haven't already. Um, in terms of the football, I mean, the City game itself, I've already spoke about in that vlog, was a really good, impressive comeback from Liverpool. Um, like I said, Mo Salah didn't take long to score, and Mane looked really lovely when he came on as well. But I think we want to get to the United game. Um, just to touch on that briefly, Shakiri. I mean, how can you not talk about Shakiri? Wonderful debut goal, wonderful assist for Sturridge, who, again, looks absolutely mustard. And yeah, Liverpool just looks streaked ahead of United, so... I know it's pre-season, but with only a couple of weeks to go until the start of the campaign, we are in a very good position, which does lead me on to our squad situation and the transfers. Um, now, I feel like these last two wins every United and City have kind of eased people's concerns, you know, rightly or wrongly. I mean, you know, as I said, yeah, you can only take so much from these pre-season games, but thankfully... Um, people aren't as concerned about the squad as they were. And I think Shakiri's performance, even though it was only 45 minutes, has suddenly made people think, yes, he is an asset for Liverpool. Yes, he can um, operate in that attacking midfield role or from out wide and be a threat um, with better players around him. Um, he's obviously going to be highly motivated to succeed at Liverpool. This might be his last chance at a big, big, big club. Um, maybe an unexpected chance, given the fact that he spent the last few years at Stoke and they got relegated, but he's got a big chance to shine at one of the biggest clubs in the world. He'll have known that in front of over 100,000 people against Manchester United in Michigan. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let, let's not act as if we've completely neglected that part of our, our squad. We've signed Shakiri, who is a very good asset. We'd all love Fakir, we'd all love Pulisic, but... Um, as I said, with the keeper in Allison now, I'm very, very happy with this squad and I do think we are serious, serious title contenders. But regardless, let's look at Christian Pulisic. Um, so, according to Raf Honigstein, it looks like he's going to stay at Dortmund. Obviously, it's been the, the talk has been that Chelsea are very interested. Obviously, they look like they're going to get rid of Willian and could lose Hazard this summer as well. Although, talk about Hazard has kind of quieted down. But they're obviously... Um, Keen on Pulisic, uh, obviously a, a young star at Dortmund, um, really impressive over the last couple of seasons. And yeah, it seems to, be, seems to have been a bit of a 50-50 battle for him. He wants to play in the Premier League um, and these two clubs seem to be uh, the, the top two destinations. Now, we've just beaten Chelsea to the signing of Alisson. Um, I, I mean, you know, the, the way things are going, Chelsea haven't really got it all in place. They're not quite as in, in such dire straits like Man United are, um, seemingly, but they're not quite... Set. I mean, I'd even argue that Arsenal look more of a, um, you know, they've kind of set their stall out already for the season uh, in comparison to Chelsea. Spurs haven't really done an awful lot, so they're not looking in great shape. So, I mean, Liverpool, out of all the, the kind of top six um, clubs, I would say are in a very, very strong position to be signing these players, which we haven't been in years gone by, but now... I mean, I was kind of worried about Alisson because, uh, you know, I heard the London factor and um, obviously Sarri would have been extra determined to bring him in, having, you know, been his opponent for so many years in Syria. But now I'm just looking at the likes of Chelsea and thinking, why can't, I, why can't we attract a player above them? I know money, we've obviously shown that we can spend money now. We've done it, we've broke the world record for the goalkeeper and the centre-back. Um, so, yeah, why not? So Pulisic... Chelsea want him, I'm not really bothered. I honestly think Liverpool is the better move for him. I honestly think Liverpool is where he will end up next summer. I think now is too soon. He needs to have that breakout season. We always talked about this with Coutinho. He needed to have that season where he was 
clearly a stand-up player in that side, and then he was to move on. Now, I would have wished Coutinho didn't move on, and I think we are becoming a club, or I'd like to think we're becoming a club where we're the end destination rather than a stepping stone. That hopefully is the case for Mane and obviously Salah as well. Um, Firmino obviously loves life here. He's you know inviting all his mates, Fabinho and 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 and, and so on. So Pulisic, you know, whilst obviously our, our two wide players in the starting eleven are, are pretty set. You know, I wouldn't rule Pulisic out next summer whether he comes in as an option because we obviously we need a big squad and I'm not really into starting 11s, I'm into squads. Um, or he can play in attacking midfield or he can move one of the other guys up front. I mean, there's so many options. He would be an, an excellent one. Um, and if maybe this is Daniel Sturridge's last year, he could be a replacement for him. There's a lot of things that could happen between now and next summer. But I genuinely think Christian, Christian Pulisic will stay at Dortmund and should stay at Dortmund this summer. I know he was really good against us uh, the other day. But I am more than happy to wait, and I'm. I think Klopp, you know, judging by his comments, um, so he says I like Christian. I've known him since I was a kid. Since he was a kid, sorry. He's still not really old. He's a fantastic player. He deserve. It's deserved. People think highly of him in America, in Germany. It's the same. If he wants to play in England or whatever one day, then for sure he has a chance to do so. But he's at a really good club for his development at this moment. It's really good to be at a club where they know him already. Um, he says, if at one point he'll join us, I don't know. I like him. It's not well, that can be the problem, but we respect contracts. So he's hinting. You know, Klopp doesn't normally do that, but he is hinting there that um, he likes him and he, you know, I think he does want him to join eventually. There's been talk of this in years gone by. They worked together very briefly at Dortmund. The relationship is there. And yeah, I, I'm i kind of going to say now that I do think he will be our marquee signing next summer, whether it's, you know, a £90 million pound deal. Uh, I think he will be the one and I... I'm very excited to see that. Hopefully we'll be Premier League champions by the time that happens. Um, on to the other attacking midfielder that, you know, we've been linked with all summer, Nabil Fakir. Um, the latest, it, it, it has died down. Um, I remember our last saying a few weeks ago that the last week of the window would be a storm. It still might be. I mean, someone else might come in for him. I can't see Liverpool being that club. Um, whether it's Man United, whether it's Chelsea, we'll see. But... Um, his brothers come out and said that Nabil Fakir could remain at Lyon this summer. Um, I mean, this isn't this isn't even really worth mentioning. But uh, his brother has said, "I don't know what he, I don't know he could do." Um, when asked if he could leave, um, that's that's it. Rob, Rob, Robert Perez was talking about it. Jurgen Klopp has said that we have everything we need for the next season because I don't think we'll do anything more in the market. I'm pretty sure of that. So. As far as I'm concerned, you can close the book of Pulisic and Fakir. You can close the book of any more incomings at Liverpool. Now, leave a comment with whether you think that's okay. I honestly do. Um, I was disappointed. Well, I mean, initially when the Fakir move broke down, I was very disappointed because I didn't think we'd get a, a number one keeper in. We have got a keeper in, which puts things into perspective. We have got this great squad now. Um, yes, the Oxlade, Oxlade Chamberlain injury is a blow and will remain a blow for the rest of the campaign. But, you know, Daniel Sturridge... I'm buying in again. I really am. Um, you know, I'd love to get your thoughts on him. Lalana back fit, looking good. I think he's going to be very much an asset for us in attacking midfield this season. He was great in Klopp's first full campaign. Um, it, I mean, it looks like it's all over for um, Ojo. You know, well, he's at least going to get a loan move. Uh, Woodburn's going to Sheffield United. Um, Kent's gone. Like, all, all, all these guys that look like they might have. You know, Harry Wilson might have got into Klopp's plans, aren't going to, but I think we don't want too much of a bloated squad. I think even with the players we've got now, we're looking at at least, we've got about 25, which is about right, uh, uh, players that are, are going to be able to make a big difference for us this season. Diva Karigi is not going to be at the club. I think Liverpool just want to get rid, while his stock is, uh, you know, well, the asking price is 26 million, so I think we'd do well to get that. I think we'd be, I think there'd be, you know, Glasses of champagne clinking in there in, on Chapel Street if we were able to get 26 million for him. Um, if anyone's up for paying that, I think Watford uh, are keen on a loan move. Um, we've seen Newcastle linked before. Um, I mean, Danny Ings likewise, Palace, Southampton, and, and uh, other clubs in the Premier League looking at him for about 20 million. So looking to recoup some of that big money that we spent this summer, which is absolutely fair enough. Um, I've seen Valencia link with Origi, maybe that would be a good move for him, fresh start in a new league. Um, he just needs to settle somewhere. I don't think it's going to be Liverpool because it doesn't fit the style of play. and uh, just don't think he's good enough, which is unfortunate because I did really like him when he first burst onto the scene in that Europa League run. 
Um, Man United to Barcelona is still a rumour, um, so we have to kind of give that one some credit. I've just got a Sky Sports article up here saying that um, Besiktas have made contact, but they haven't followed that up with a bid. And Barcelona are interested. They're obviously looking for an, another, um, well, a sub goalie, let's, let's face it. So there we go. That's the transfer talk. It's been pretty quiet recently. I think most of the headlines, as far as Liverpool are concerned, have been on the pitch. Um, very positive last couple of results after a disappointing loss to Dortmund, which seems like forever ago because, you know, that was that was Loris Karras' um, you know, big, well, another one of his bad days at the office. Um, but the mood since then has, has been lifted. Karras hasn't had to face any spotlight, which is which is good. Um, so I think we can all move forward. Let's get this transfer window out of the way. Stop thinking about it. Stop panicking about our, our options and let's just get into the season where we are the second favourites to win the league and rightly so. I think we're clear second favourites. Um, I think, in fact, the odds between us and, us and City should be a bit closer together. Um, in terms of other title contenders, I mean, you can never write Chelsea off because they always seem to bounce back after a bad season. You can never write United off because it's Mourinho. But he seems like he's holding them back more than anything else this season. Spurs I'm not really taking seriously yet because they haven't done enough in the market and um, everyone else is progressing while they're kind of standing still. Arsenal are the interesting one. Um, I mean, you look at their squad on paper, especially in attack, and it's frightening. Um, I'm not convinced by the signings. I'm not convinced by the manager, but that's um, maybe something I'll be proved wrong on. Um, no, I know he won the league with PSG. I know he's got. I know he's won plenty of trophies, more than Jurgen Klopp, which I'm sure we'll be reminded about on Twitter for the next nine months. But yeah, I mean, I'm, it's not an appointment that scares me like a Simeone would have. Um, or even a Bouvatch would have, because you know, then there would have been the fear of the unknown. But uh, yeah, Arsenal, I think, very much top four contenders. But yeah, for me, Liverpool are, are streets ahead of everyone bar City. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe Spurs can still cause an issue or two. But yeah, we're in a very strong position, guys. Let's be positive. Um, no transfers, as far as I'm concerned. I might be wrong. There might be a surprise. Um, so leave a comment with whether you think there will be a, a surprise between now and August the 9th, when the window shuts. Until then, guys, um, I'll be back with a preview for Napoli very soon. And, yeah, make sure you're following me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Uh, make sure you're subscribed here if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.